Hi, my name is Christina Cole from Together Again Memory Beads. I make cremation jewelry and other life memory jewelry as well. Um, and today I'm going to show you how to line the silver core of a big hole bead. So this is the big hole bead. Come on in and I'll show you. So this is the big hole bead and it goes on a big bracelet like this. And this one is a pet memory bead. This is actually my bead. It has my dog's ashes in it. Um, and so I figured I'd line this for you and, um, and just kind of show you the tools and equipment and how to do it. So, um, in my process, when I send out photos, I, I just use these little temporary grommets to show in pictures. And then once it's approved, then I'll take them back out and then do the, um, the finished product. Just a little tip for anybody who does photo approvals. So I'll put those away. So some of the tools that we use, a Sharpie permanent marker um, with a fine tip. These are two different examples of the, um, the tubing that we use. This is copper, that one is silver. This one is to cut the tubing, um, a diamond file. This is, I don't know what it's called, but it deburrs, maybe that's what it's called, <laughs> a deburrer. <laughs> um, and a burnisher, it's a countersink um, piece for a hand drill. Um, and then the Im impress liner. Um, and then if you wanna use a polishing pad at the end, and then this is just a grommet, or not a grommet, a, um, a little um, silicone o-ring to put on the end of your uh, bracelet so that it's just to ensure that your bead isn't going to fall off as easily if it were to come undone. Um, and I have black and um, kind of a translucent clear. So I'm gonna do this in copper because my dog was um, kind of that red color. He was a Shiba Inu. And so we want to get about maybe two millimeters on each side. There we go. And then we want to put this in here. I'm gonna loosen it up just a little bit. There we go. And get right on that line. There we go. Okay, so then you don't want to do it too tight because then you can't move it. So you'll you'll be able to tell when it's kind of done its job and then tighten it again. Start spinning. Now I really want to get one of the electric ones uh, with the diamond saw blade. I don't know why I haven't gotten it yet. Because <laughs> it's just like, and it's done. <laughs> so, we're almost there. Do this a few times. There we go. Okay, so the next step we want to do, so it was the end of the raw of the um, tubing, so this end is really nice. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of clean that up anyways. Um, it'll help kind of polish up the ends and just make them a little more equal um, in appearance. And then we're going to polish up this side, sand it down. And I just, I go back and forth like this. Um, to ensure that I get all of the angles. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's a little more. Okay, so you can see maybe um, inside there's some um, extra material in there. So we want to go in here. And I like to roll it. Some people will go all the way around because this does spin but I like to go in, in um, one direction and roll with my fingers. I can kind of, I, I personally feel like I have a little more control 
and I can get a better feel for um, if there's anything um, catching. There we go. Okay, kind of creates a little bevel. Okay, let's do that on the other side. We want it equal. So it flares equally, it appears to look the same on each side. Okay. Looking good? Okay. So then this is, um, it's like a, I don't know, I'm, I think it's a thing for counter seeking. I, I just found it in a toolbox and I'm like, hey, this will work. <laughs> okay, looks good. Yes, you can. There we go. Okay, just make sure that all of that stuff is nice and clean. If you don't get it now, you will see it when it's nice and flared and it'll just have these little things and you don't want it catching on your clothes or your hair or anything like that. So it's important to do that now. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we want to um, just go, just flare out just a little bit. Keep the bead away from here. You don't want to get it stuck as you're flaring it. Okay, that's nice and tight. You have to flip it a few times. You don't want to just do one side and then, and then the other and be done with it, okay? Okay, good. Nice and tight. So it's still loose in there. So this is what it looks like so far. And by putting reversing it and putting it up against it kind of helped flatten that side. So now we're going to go on this side. Okay, and then I'm just going to give it a nice little tug and see how it's um, extra loose. So I'm just going to kind of find the loosest spot and let it flare as much as possible. There we go. And I'm just checking to make sure it's nice and tight. Now, this is very critical. Don't go too much or you will crack your bead. <laughs> I've done it a couple times. And I think we're done. So, um, looks good. Now, copper has that patina on it. So, I'm just going to get in here. Oh, already it's um, just with one little tiny dab. It kind of cleaned it up. There we go. Nice and pretty there. I love it. Okay. So um, now this one has a paw print. If you're going to make beads and add any embellishments or designs to it, you have to be really mindful that the, the little um, fingers of the paw doesn't go over the um, edge of your glass bead it, or else when you go in here, if that touches um, the, the bottom right here, it will, um, it'll crack the whole bead. So you just need to be really mindful of that. Um, so if you're going to do any frit beads or, um, any like stringers around it, that's three dimensional, just make sure that the very edges of it is nice and flat and clears the tool. So thank you for watching. Um, check me out. I have um, Pinterest, Twitter, uh, Facebook, all of that stuff. And I am together again, Memory Beads. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.